Welcome back, everybody, to Rob's Metalworks. We are here on a Saturday night as we are embarking at the beginning of December and ending out what a magnificent year had the program for 2022. And yes, I'm so happy to bring to you tonight one of El Paso's really brightest stars right now in their scene. The band called Scattered Storm is here in the studio. Welcome, gentlemen, to our program. Yeah, pleasure, God. pleasure to be here. To be here. God, you thank know, you for I, having. I know you guys, man. I know you guys. I know your scene. Uh, we've been talking tonight about all the uh, crazy characters in San Antonio and El Paso, but um, <laughs> that, that that's really cool because I love that we can have that rapport and that rich that rich history in our conversations. You know, yeah. um, that's so cool. Um, but yet. Scattered Storm uh, will be new for many people, not only in Texas, but around the country who watch our program. So I really want to kind of start there. Um, tell us a little bit about the beginnings of this band, because um, I found out tonight uh, that you guys have been around long enough to have another release previous to the one that we're going to focus on tonight. And I didn't really know that. I I'd seen some of the old videos but I didn't really kind of want to dwell into that because I wanted to focus on uh, in the in the dying sun, but uh, in this dying sun. So uh, let's let's share a little bit about that. When did this band form, and how did it kind of get together? Well, 2019, um, me and Kevin were kind of throwing ideas around um, when it came to like songs. We always wanted to kind of play together, and it's funny because when you mentioned the scene and the history of the scene, it's like at some point. Each and every one of us has played in a band together or has attended a show of a band that we played. Right. In this case, Kevin was like, when me and Andre were playing in Years of Cold, um, he would pl he would come and see our shows. He was like 15, 16. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'll come and help him uh, load out their gear and all this stuff. So. Wow. So, so yeah. <laughs> dream come true. <laughs> and, 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 you know, just so, just so that people know the players, so Jay... Uh, you play drums, Brian, the bass, yeah. Andre, the vocalist, and Kevin, guitar. Andre, I've known you for many, many years. I've always thought... As a stripper. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he had strippers at his show. I know that. Oh, yeah. he, had, he had bitches at his show. <laughs> yeah, like, well, remember 420 Flip show? Band-Aids. Oh, Band-Aids. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, and, and Andre, it's so cool, man, because I've seen you do so many things throughout your career, your long career. And it's so cool. I remember when I first heard this stuff, the Scattered Storms, I was like, wow, this is like totally new for him. And it's so cool that you, you're you doing it and you're doing it well. Yeah. So keep on, Jay. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Uh, so at some point, me and Kevin were like, well, let's start a project because um, it, it just happened. I, I, I would get to see like his songs. Oh, we played together in his previous band, um, Section 6. And from there, we kind of established a report. I kind of liked what he was doing. Section 6 was all the makeup stuff. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I remember. Didn't y'all play Bonds? We did. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I was there. I remember that. Yeah, I remember we came here. I remember yeah. we came here. We did a, an interview. Well, yeah, I just, right. I just got this. I just got this, um, this little tattoo. Yeah. Uh, on, on that trip. So I remember I, I was looking forward to We were supposed to play Bonds tonight. So I was kind of <laughs> looking forward to see if uh, uh, they used to have that... Uh, uh, that uh, bar where all the bands would oh, sign and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I was yeah. kind of curious because we all signed it. They drew our logo there, so I was yeah. kind of wondering if they still got it there. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. See, yeah. More, why more, didn't we talk about that earlier? <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like, so much to talk about. I know. <laughs> the, the history goes deep. Yeah, yeah. Very deep. So finally, we got around to playing together, and we started recording in my studio. So we bounced, it, it took a while to get this project going, like a year. Are you guys originally from El Paso? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I played in, in Mexico and Juarez, so I know a lot of the Fuck. Juarez people over there. Yeah. So I, I grew up in Juarez, actually. I'm not messing with uh, you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should have. Like, put a hit on. You're going to be like, yeah, you should, you're like you should not. he pissed me off. Put a hit on that puto. <laughs> Yeah, I'm all, yeah, living in Juarez is... It's on uh, record. It's a, it's a different thing. <laughs> Fuck. But, uh, Let me tell you a quick story. My, my ex-wife was from El Paso. I don't know if you knew that. Mm. My, I do. I remember back then. My ex-wife was from El Paso, so I would, we would have to go to El Paso. Like, we would go to El Paso like, two or three times a year for Christmas and Thanksgiving and shit like that. And I remember my, my, my father-in-law 
would say, come on, let's get in the truck. We're going to go to Juarez. And I'd be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and so he'd take me across the border into Juarez, bro. And he was driving like a fucking, they're like, it's not the same as driving here. Like, uh, you're fucking driving crazy. I and I was like. It's almost a free for all. It's, yeah, yeah. E- even Google gets confused. And then <laughs> we'd finally get to where we were going. And he would buy me like this, like a, he'd take me to this place where they had like tortillas with wiener. Like a oh, yeah, wiener yeah. taco. Yeah. And I, he would say, yeah, they compré un wiener taco. So I eat it. And it wasn't all that great. You know, I wasn't used to it, but I ate it. And then I'd be thinking, I'm like, oh, man, get me back across the fucking board. Well, you know, Juarez is the birthplace of the burrito, man. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So there you go. Wow. Wow. Um, we got, and the margarita. Yeah. So, you know, I'm familiar with the El Paso culture and I, and I like it. And I didn't say this to you guys earlier off camera, but there was a time. I swear to God, there was a time where I strongly contemplated moving to El Paso. Yeah, yeah it's a good town. It's cost of living's great. Yeah, well, not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, it's it's overly priced for I've sure. I've seen some really nice houses pop yeah. up now. Yeah, but man, it's still home, you know. It's, yeah, it's great. It, plus the border aspect of it, you know, you get you get to interact with both markets over there. But you know, eventually we recorded some stuff, and Andre was playing with his previous band, and we showed up at, at his show, and I kind of told him, "Hey, look, what I'm working on," because. We always kept in touch. I mean, I always supported his projects. He always supported our projects because we, we're kind of like that. Um, and and it's funny because at that point, I, I was teching for the Piss and Razors, ironically. Uh, I was Matt Lynch's guitar tech. And so that's when we started fiddling around. And then Andre heard the stuff. He's like, man, I, I really like this stuff. Uh, I would love to you Who's know participate. Who, who, who's your vocalist? Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have one. So Andre, you were just like listening to like guitars and drums. He uh, yeah. well, he came he came to see uh he came to see us play with uh was it here after the wave? Yeah, yeah but yeah, but he was he's uh, here after the wave. Here Who after was the, the guitar wave. player in that band? Uh, Hector. Hector, Hector Camarones, oh yeah. my goodness. Camarones. Hector Camarones. Hector Camarones. Yeah. Another, our, another character. One of our good buddies, my brother, yeah. From the El Paso metal scene that I forgot he's, about. Uh, he's the El Paso shredder. I mean, honestly, that guy is the <laughs> most <laughs> phenomenal guitar player that I can't ever remember witness. when I did the Rob Showcase in El Paso. What was the name of his band at that time? He was singing. 5393. 5393. Uh, well, five, three, I think previous, there was. What was the previous one before that one? Or. Uh, uh, with Rick. There was another band before yeah, five three nine three. No, no, we'll find out. I got it in my archive. It's right here. But I remember. Yeah, yeah he was. He's uh, he's a great player and a, he a character. He is. Yeah. And Javi, Javi came he out is. to see us. As a matter of fact, Javi's the original drummer from here after the way. Yeah. But when he he parted ways to continue some other adventures, we got another drummer. And of course, he still comes out and supports us. So he before the show, he was like, "Come on, come out to the car and let me show you something real quick." So I was like, "All right." Went out there and he played the music, and I was just like. This sounds amazing. amazing. Like, who's your so? Who's your vocalist? Let me ask you something really quick. I was gonna save this for later, but because you, when you were kind of exposed to this music, and I mentioned this uh, in my one of my postings and promoting this interview, and I said this is kind of I'm, I'm not used to hearing this kind of music out of the El Paso scene. Is that true? It's, it's true. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny because uh, we just went recently on the tour. Uh, to Mexico we did like three dates in Mexico that was our first tour actually wow I put it together because I have a promoting company still but uh, I kind of use it scarcely here and there but uh, we put a tour together got some very good talented bands from Mexico to come with us and um, and we sounded like no one (laughs) we were like the odd band of that tour and and it was pretty cool because the people that would come up to us would be like man your band is something different right right totally cool like completely what what the hell out of the blue you yeah know, you don't sound like the other two bands yeah and i was like well that's great i mean that's great feedback for us because that's really the intention when we started writing these songs together yeah i was like you know i want to make so i want to grab these elements from bands that we love because we're really like we wear our influence influences in our sleeve obviously um like mishoga and fear factory and you know nemic um which is, is neurosis one of those bands no, i <laughs> fucking, lo- I fucking love neurosis. I yeah. didn't. I, I, I did not read that anywhere. You just like I just fucking like I know neurosis. I'm like this is very. You hit it. You hit it on the spot. Dude, I, f- I cannot. 
<laughs> described. I love Neurosis so much. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking home run right there. Yeah. No. yeah. That, was, yeah that was good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, when I first heard it, I was like, wow, like, this is not something I would expect out of the El Paso metal scene. It's To me, it's like so complex and advanced. It's like, you know, and then I thought, like, man, who did he sound like? This is very Neurosis, like, because... Uh, it's it's kind of slow and heavy and there's like uh, subtleties and it can get heavy and soft and it's just so it takes you on this wild ride like you're never kind of just like in one place no that was that was the point it's like i want to get the sludge parts from mishuga because mishuga is overly technical we all know that but i was like yeah we can get that technical but kind of tone it down a little bit make it sludgier and then add all of this like devin townsend ambience to it yeah to it so that's why when andre joined i was like you need to be a different monster you cannot be you know Piss screaming and andre. yeah 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 you cannot be here after the wait so producing him was really really cool because it's like do whatever you want well, yeah everything that i was wanting to do basically right right you know I mean? right so yeah. how long did you did you join right away you're like yeah i'm in so here's the thing when me and kevin were talking about it's it like we need we need a vocalist yeah and we were really not set on picking anybody really we were kind of just like it was not a priority but when when he offered i mean i've known him for so many years i mean i've been in two projects with him i know his potential i know his stage presence yeah yeah it's phenomenal so important yeah yeah big time so I mean, important yeah i mean when you talk about like guys like andre i mean there's not really a lot of them yeah, yeah, people yeah. think that yeah you can just get especially a guy, not in el paso yeah Exactly. Especially not in El Paso. Because everybody's like, yeah, you can get a guy that growls and sings and, and yeah, and that's that. And I'm like, yeah, but can you get somebody that has that 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 presence? Confidence you know? and that so presence like, on stage, yeah. So it was a no-brainer. And we eventually, and, and, you know, it's kind of funny because initially it was going to be Hector, Kevin, this guy right here, and, and me as a four-piece. But... For whatever reason, time wise, and it didn't happen with Hector. It didn't happen with him, but he still recorded uh, some songs on the album. But he was just like, "I'm not at that place right now. You know, I can't. I can't freaking do it. Uh, can you, you can't curse on this? Yeah, one. you can. Okay, I can't fucking do it. That's what he said. <laughs> so I was like, "All right," and that's when, uh, ironically, Kevin showed it to Ed Razor. Oh, okay. And, and Ed Razor was like, "Man, you guys have a bass player." And he's like, no, ironically, we don't. We've been looking for him. I was like, I'll be your bass player. And that's how the first iteration incarnation of this, of, yeah, yeah, incarnation yeah. Of, of this band yeah. occurred. Um, Eddie from Pissing Razors, because yeah. those people don't know who the El Diablo, El Diablo is. Yeah, because, I mean, again, with Ed. And, and happy birthday, Eddie. Yeah, I know your I birthday say, was birthday. Yesterday, yesterday, right? Yeah. 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 So it's it's funny because Eddie, we were still saying like we wouldn't fuck with you in a fight. Like you would, <laughs> <laughs> you would kick all our asses. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just it was just like it just happened that way. But you know, Ed's commitments with obviously piss and razors yeah, were yeah. kind of holding him back from doing a lot of the stuff too. And he had certain restrictions in his personal life. Sure, you know, where sure. we were like you know trying to. Sure. You know, get out. He has kids and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then eventually, uh, this guy came around and recorded some more songs on the on this EP, which is the In This Dying Sun, which he did Bloody Love, and uh, a, a couple another song of off of that record. And it was like, hey, just just join the band. And he's like, all right, yeah, Brian, come on. <laughs> he come was, on. He was playing hard to get. Huh. See, the history with me and him, we, we used to play in a prog band from Juarez, because he's from Juarez, too, oh, okay. uh, um, called Random Illusion. And uh, we used to open up for <laughs> Years of Cold. So it's like a whole con me and him played together at some point. So it's like the Kevin Bacon thing, you know? It's like everybody knows and gets together at some point. But finally, when we got around to this EP, um, I got some good friends from Brazil, which I, I need to say hi, uh, Alan Wallace from a band called Eminence. During the pandemic, um, well, nobody was doing anything, right? So I, I called him up, because he's a very good friend. I was like, hey, let's write something. Let's do a, a song or something. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And he started sending me riffs, and which is another band that we created during the pandemic called No Life on Earth, which we got my buddy Alan from Brazil, and then another very famous player from Brazil who plays in a pop band called uh, Jota Quest. Mm. He's like big. Mm. He's a he's a rock star over there. Wow, like a big big time guy. And then we started getting like, PJ. yeah, mm. hi PJ. 
we started getting uh, these uh, guest appearances. So we had Andreas Kisser from Sepultura play in uh, one nice. of our songs. Uh, Cesar Soto played in uh, nice. one of our songs too. And Hector, he did a cameo. And then our our and mixer. that's on the first Scattered Storm. No, record? this is another band called No, no Life oh, on okay, Earth. Okay, okay, okay. So we kind of put the scattered stuff for for that during the pandemic. But then the pandemic ended, and it's like, okay, we need to get on this second record right, now. Right. And that's when we did In This Dying Sun. Great. So uh, we kind of alluded this alluded to this just a short while ago. But if someone said to you, "Tell me." about your sound what is what is uh uh scattered storm delivering what do, what do you say i'd say we're delivering um a new style of atmospheric groove metal slightly dabbling in like industrial feel or even in somewhat type of a black metal feel at times just depending you know i mean it's just real to me it's 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 the energy's changed so much and i think that's what the whole intention of this band you know, thus the name Scattered Storm is kind of an overall, you know, entity of, of its of everything that we've all been built upon and, and you know, our foundations have kind of brought us to this point. So it's it's a it's a scattered storm and and every Mayhem. song will, will definitely give you that f- sensation, that feeling. Man, it's Texas, right? I want you I want you to elaborate on that because that actually was gonna be one of my next questions. One of the things too that I noticed right away when I when I started watching the videos is that and I'm sure this was something that you guys thought out uh, thought out was that Scattered Storm was also going to be a very visual type of project. Yes, definitely. I mean from from when we actually figured that you know what we 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 got all the connecting parts together let's let's focus on a on a on a path and this is the path that we're we're trying to stick with i mean it's something new to everybody but i think we're having fun doing this and i mean and and the bottom line that's what it's about is just having the fun doing that T- tell me a little bit about the visual though because it's, it's very dark i mean yeah. the, the lyrics are dark the 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 look is dark uh, the videos are like dark and cultish. There's this very <laughs> ominous kind of, you know, you know, vibe, you know, because when you when you talk about, you know, a song like Bloody Love um, or In This Dying Sun kind of reminiscing about, you know, really the and, and I, I so ironically mentioned this in my post when I announced these interviews. And I said the fragility of this world that we live in, mm-hmm. because I think we all kind of feel um, that we live in a very fragile kind of world, like this world could fall apart at any moment. And like when you watch the video for the title track, I see all of that. You guys are saying all of that. And, and you know, you're saying, you know, hate leads to suffering. And we, we know that, man. And um, I kind of was attracted to that aspect. Uh, and, and no better way than to enhance that message not only with the lyrics but with the with the vision yeah. with what you're seeing on video the the thing what the thing is that uh everybody but mostly kevin and i are very big fans of like uh, movies comic books yeah anime uh really yeah i mean we read a lot i mean we have yeah, books great. comics he reads a lot as well he sits back sometimes and you know <laughs> sometimes we get him a book and he just practices there are words yeah in the portal, man. they are yeah but um there's the, good articles in playboy bro yeah, exactly <laughs> no but one of the main things when we started was like do do we want to do something visually and immediately i was like of course yeah, man yeah. we're fans of movies and you kind of have to these days a little bit yeah. i and, think back when we think about like the old bands like we were talking about shadows fall earlier like yeah you know, those old, even back in, the, you know, it's hard to believe, you know, when we talk about the, the new wave of American metal and we talk about bands like Chimera, it, it was 20 mm. years ago. Yeah. It was 20 years. And, and times have changed since then. And that's funny because people would compare us to Mutt Vane and we're like, okay, I get it because it's the makeup stuff. But some people really pinpoint on the fact that we're very, our makeup is very tribal. And and that was intentional. And Mary Indian. Mary Indian. But we have a mix of like Viking, Viking war, American. like Native American. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I guess Europeans call it that. Yeah. Because uh, we've been getting a lot of reviews lately for this record and we've been reading on them and there's like everybody kind of focuses on that. We're like, yeah, that's exactly what we wanted to go for. The philosophical aspects of, you know, the, the war paint. Yeah, but on a more, 
on a more as 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 well as being primitive, but more in a futuristic alien aspect, I guess you know. The sci-fi aspect. Yeah, definitely. So we're we're kind of going for that type of look rather than a typical authentic tribal primitive look. I mean, we're. Think about Predator. Yeah, I think I think you guys have have done a really really good job on that, and we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk more in depth about the videos later, but. Like scene when I saw scene the video for scene it was just like whoa this is like so cool it's so you. <laughs> freaking yeah, cool you know and we'll talk about like I said we'll talk about that later but it's really coming across I think you guys are doing a great job on that front um, and then you know too I also kind of feel like the music for uh, scattered storm is is pretty like I used the word complex earlier but like you really have to be like an advanced kind of music person to kind of really get it i mean i remember when i heard it i had to hear it like about two or three times and then i really started getting it you know because it's so there's so much into it like you don't even know where to kind of focus on first but it was great yeah yeah and i feel that way too when i was first listening to the stuff we were writing but and i kind of feel that that's you know some people are like oh you know it took me a few times to hear it to like it but it's like well it's i kind of feel that's good because you have to grasp it and understand it as opposed to like every band sounds the same. As soon as the first song comes on, it's like, oh, right. yeah, it sounds cool because it's just like the typical riffs, the typical stuff you're hearing from every band. And it's like, yeah, everything sounds good, but what the substance, the, 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 the versatility is not really there with a lot of the, the new music coming out. And, and I think that's what we try to really focus on with in, 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 all our, in, the, in all the parts that we're trying to do here. So the, the first record... What was the title of that one? Did I have a Oblivion. title? Oblivion. 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 Is that still available? Yeah, yeah, it's on, it's on all right. media, it's Spotify, all right. Apple, all that. You know, really, like, I, I'm one of those people, like, I listen to a band and I really like it, then I, yeah. I go back that, and dig for EP, the old stuff. Javi recorded everything, produced everything. Yeah. I mean, he, he's, been, he's been really working at his craft in the, in the producer aspect. Nice. And, and, and I didn't know he's, that. He's evolved. He's, he's evolved immensely, so it's... It's uh, it's great to have somebody like this For that sure. just doesn't play the drums. He's he's he plays guitar. He he's he knows you know he's it's got a good ear for vocals, trades, he, and huh? so it, it it really helps with especially producing this new EP. He's a pretty good Jack and Dr Pepper drinker too. Definitely, oh, yeah. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, oh God! <laughs> Did you ever see that video? And somebody gave Eddie, uh, they were on the pissing rears, like bottles of moonshine. Did you yeah, see those? Yeah. Yeah. And one he one night he made me drink moonshine with him, and I was like, "Well, I mean, he was I, calling me a pussy and shit because I was like, <coughs> I was like, <coughs> that's the thing. It's like if you're gonna drink with Ed, oh. I mean, you you know what you're getting into shit, Joe for Razor sure. Too. Oh, oh, uh, oh, don't even don't even Eddie start. Razor count. <laughs> Fuck. What they call it, liver boxing? Yeah. I'm not liver boxing with those motherfuckers. No, no, you get knocked out. A long time ago, Joe Razor used to drink all the time. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Rumplemints. And then now he's Fireball mm. Man, right? Yeah, yeah, Fireball Man. Motherfucker came over here one time. We were just talking, and he <laughs> put it in his pocket. It pulled out a Fireball. Yeah. Put it back yeah. in his pocket. I'm like, God but damn. He, he found Christ. Oh, yeah. He better. <laughs> he better. He wants to live forever. So then he went to Fireball. Yeah, so <laughs> just like no more rumplements. Something lighter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the the H E B Rumplemints. Have you seen the H E B Rumplemints? Oh, I don't. I don't even. I hate that. That liquor. it's it's lighter alcohol. It doesn't have alcohol, as much alcohol as 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 the rumple. I mean, I'm talking the Fireball that they sell like at H E B. Yeah. Yeah, they sell it. Do y'all have H E B in El Paso? No. No. I'm sorry. I'm not. I mean, uh, H E B here in San Antonio sells Fireball at the store. And so I went to the liquor store and I told the dude. I said, "Is that the same Fireball?" He goes, "No. The Fireball that they sell at H E B has less alcohol in it." Oh, yeah. Okay. So Joe, I'll send you some H B. Some H E B fireball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, how much time uh, passed before uh, the first release and in this dying sun? A year. How? Too how? Long. Okay. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of funny you say that because to me I would have said, well, that's not long at all. And you're like, yeah. Because, what happens with musicians, they kind of put music together and mm -hmm. in a short while, even before it's out in the public, they're already tired of it. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. they're ready to move on yeah. to the next record. We just dropped the record, but we're ready for the next one. Yeah. Right. Um, how do you guys feel you've progressed since the, the very, since Oblivion to the, In This Dying Sun? What's, what got better? Well, sonically, um, through our mutual acquaintances, we were able to get to Matson, who has mixed and produced Meshuga, 
uh, wow. Nemec, uh, The Haunted. Where's he from? Uh, Sweet. No. Um, oh, no, no, no. Denmark. 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 Sorry, too. Um, yeah. <laughs> watching too much World Cup. <laughs> so, yeah, we were, we were, because we wanted to take our sound at a different level because of the songs we were writing. I mean, I was mixing them and we were getting to that point, but at some point, you know, you get your friends in the industry giving you advice, right? So they're like, I think you need a little bit. Of and two, you kind of get too used. You, you're too close to your own painting. Exactly. So exactly. I was like, I sent them everything raw, and it's like, here you go. Uh, what changed musically? I mean, the way we write is really, it's strange. Because <laughs> I mean, I I write on the guitar too, but me and Kevin get together and just kind of throw ideas off, and then we're kind of like, okay, so let's kind of build it from there. But given that we started the No Life on Earth project, we kind of put our second album on hold. That's why it took a while. But finally, when that when that was over, we we always write songs. I mean, we always have riffs. And like right now, we have probably another record right, <laughs> if right. we wanted to. It's so like, uh, I don't like to use the word down tune, but it's really heavy. And it's not down to, but you're using like a seven string, Kevin, or yeah, I'm using the seven and eight strings. I yeah, mean, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm primarily a seven string guy. That's where I get my kicks. Um, yeah. But it seems that everyone I jam with wants me to play eight strings. <laughs> really? <laughs> so so yeah. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not averse to it. You know. To that too. Yeah. 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 I can vouch that too. It's it's kind of difficult to find a band where. They're not gonna play in that very low tuning. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I mean, like the the whole uh, kind of thing for like I guess the origin of of our sound is um, I don't know if you're a gamer, um, but Doom 2016 was huge for me for the soundtrack. I can't tell you how many bands I've had here, and some of these guys are young cats. And uh, they talk about Doom, and then they talk about the dude who wrote those Mick Doom Gordon. tracks. Yeah. yeah, that dude. Like, like he's like, come up in conversations it before. Is mind blowing. And then just like the, the like the creative aspects, like uh, when my last project kind of fell apart, I was like, kind of this is w this is what I want to do. So I kind of started writing stuff in a in a vein that could fit that. And one thing that I did take from that guy, Mick Gordon, is he wrote to pictures of mm. game development and concept art so they would send it to him and then he <laughs> yes write so, the stuff? yeah so then he would be like well what does this sound like like we have wow. a song called kingslayer yeah. i was watching godzilla on a loop and i was like well what would a kaiju fight a giant monster fight sound like if it was a metal song <laughs> oh, and and that and that and that and that came up and you can and you can hear it you know what i mean like the progression of kingslayer is the 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 monsters come up they meet there's this all this lost moment and they fight and there's this big finale and and, and that's kind of where like conceptually a lot of that stuff comes from is like visual media for me anyway Wow, yeah. that's so like beyond me. You know, I'm, I'm I've never been a musician, and and you know when I hear about how guys kind of develop their their songs and their riffs and their lyrics and you know doing it that way, uh, I, I, it's it's kind of beyond me. Yeah, it's not kind of funny to mention that because um, you know, he talks about Kingslayer like like he would send me the songs and it would have a title already. So I kind of like envisioned that too. And it's funny, we were recording, we would send it to him and he would kind of envision that and write upon that. Cause we have songs like uh, uh, on the previous record called Necronomicon. Cause yeah. we're big HP Lovecraft yeah, yeah. readers, right? Yeah. So it's this very dark piece. You'll hear it, you'll be like, holy crap. So I can kind of get, and then he, get, he would get that instantly either from the music or the song title. Wow. Uh, you guys need a refill? Are you sure? No, no, I'm good. Uh, we can take we can take a pause if you need a refill. It's up to you, buddy. Okay. I'm, We're good. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so uh, I've been calling you Jay, but uh, uh, everybody calls ha me that or Javi. Javi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you did the recording, and then uh, you sent the tracks to Norway to be mixed. Yeah, to Denmark. Um, so I got in contact with two. Two is like, well, you know, sure, I'll do, I'll do your project. And he yeah. actually ended up liking it a lot uh, because when he finally mixed the songs, I kind of sent him references of what we wanted to hear. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny because nowadays you send everything like with a DI so it can get perfect. I was like, no, here's the track as it was recorded, analog, yeah, yeah. you know, 
just mix that and he's like yeah it's your sound we'll we'll do that but when when we got the product back he's like he's like you got something really special going on That's so cool, i man. really i really like that he ended up using one of our songs for his uh drum forge samples that he put out through drum forge yeah so he's like hey i hope you don't guys don't mind we're gonna use a track from in this dying sun and i'm gonna put it in my drums i was like yeah no, i said course. i don't mind just give me a fucking <laughs> discount on what you charge us for the recording <laughs> for the mix yeah. exactly what the fuck? yeah so this ain't show friends baby it's show <laughs> business <laughs> Yeah. It don't matter if you're in Sweden, Norway, or in the yeah. U.S., motherfucker. Two did an amazing job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two did an amazing job producing it, and I think, you know, just having him do that alone was, like, you know, a, a really, it was honored, we are honored for him to, to, to do that. So it's, yeah. When, when do you get the Meshuga to mix your record? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It doesn't happen. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so uh, this past October, you guys released the first single, Bloody Love. Bloody Love. Bloody Love. Cool track. I love that track. Um, wh why did you guys choose that one? Because as I told you, I, I have another favorite, and there was, there's so many. A uh, scene is also really good. Why Bloody Love? Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing, too. It's so hard you know, we, with yeah. all the songs that we have. We're like, I love this, and I love, we're, we're trying to find the one that just kind of grouped everything into one powerful punch to just be our first released for that reason to just the first one to come out and just and, punch you in the fucking face and also it's the first impression exactly yeah. and that's yeah, what yeah. we were going like, for we this is we the first song we were here we weren't going to settle for like doing just the release of the song or a, a lyric video we wanted to come out with a video and the song to give more of an impact because we felt overall like at this point we're trying to come out guns blazing right now and we're trying to get everything we're trying to give it all right now so we can you know have the most impact with with what we're trying to 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 send out there you know so we want everybody to hear what we're really you know feeling right now and that that bloody love was kind of like the one that we felt was going to be the song to come out and get everybody to say hey look, hey, look this check way, it you know? out yeah and uh it's just like the, the powerful catchy type song you know it's yeah, yeah. like that we want to like he said just come in punch you in the face plus it has this very ramsteinish industrial group yeah 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 uh which we're really big fans of and i was um, gonna mention that band yeah. too so it that's the thing it's like when you hear the record it's not like one song doesn't really sound like the other right so that's the main point nice so uh the record dropped on november 11th uh geez not even a month ago great that's awesome oh, um yeah. what's the reception been like so far it's been exceptionally well i mean surprisingly you know we've we've been getting such great responses i mean uh i mean we're, we're it's kind of almost like too good to be true the, the things we're hearing from uh reviews from like all over the world really yeah know, yeah through, our, through blood blast and them and asher media they're they're doing like a lot for us and, and they're getting it out there and everything that we're seeing coming back has been really good i mean exceptionally well and i mean even surprisingly you know we were reading some of the reviews on the drive up here and we were just like wow like that's I mean, cool everybody is saying the same thing you know it's like a, it's it's a it's a pleasant uh difference from the the stuff that's out there so everybody's like really really paying attention to the the different style and the different sound and, and we're and, and and it's getting good reviews so and i i think too uh you know we we, we we're talking about bands like mashuga and neurosis and some of the younger people out there, they don't know who those bands are. Those bands are like old hat. Like we don't know. So, True. so for example, it's got the, the analogy I would make is like the young cats, they know who Ghost is, but they don't know who King Diamond is. They're <laughs> like, who's King Diamond? Who's Bruce Fay? We don't know about that. But here's Ghost. And, and you know, it's their version of Merciful. Yeah, yeah. And like to me, you guys are like the, the new version of these bands that have you know a part of our history awesome. and, and learn and all these younger people um are are still attracted to that vibe and sound uh and you guys are delivering it to them because they're not tapped into that old stuff like we are um that that we still talk about yeah. you know every day well not all this new generation of kids have had parents that you know have have a yeah, exactly. You know, we, we, we 
had our uncles or fathers or mothers who listened to like the older stuff and got us into that stuff and you know a lot of them have it so that 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 new generation only knows of these new new yeah. bands that way but if you know they, they don't need parents they got youtube now <laughs> they got social media now they don't need that the ipad is the parent you know i i always you know i was I was doing an interview a couple of weeks ago uh, with this old veteran from san antonio and i was like i told him one of the things i said that has really stuck with me is like you know back back in the old school days you know even you know in old school to us is like you know the 90s um we needed each other more back then you know now with social media and you know youtube and audio files we don't we don't need each other as much anymore it's 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 uh, you know it's just the way of the world that it is and you know we all have to adapt and now we all have to have a social media presence and you know it gets a little trying at times to keep up with that you, you have know? to be accepted socially on the media rather than socially in person yeah 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 uh it's amazing you know and i'm glad that we're living through it and who who knows what the next decade will bring us um, so all you people out there, we've been talking about Scattered Storm's brand new record. It's called In This Dying Sun. Go ahead and take a look at the cover work for it. It is out already on all music media outlets. Be sure to go out there and pick it up, download it, and jam it right after you watch this interview. Blast it. Uh, Andre, I want you to talk about some of the lyrical themes, too. Um, of this record I, I kind of uh, mentioned earlier that it's a it's a dark kind of cultish you know kind of ominous um, type of themes that I hear in this record and you know sometimes you know people just kind of want to kind of dive into that too because it's part of our reality you know, it's hard to escape it you know very much so yeah I mean a lot of the the lyrical content is about just I mean it, it, it focuses on a lot of aspects of life I mean it's really not just one aspect like bloody love you know there's it, it goes it, <laughs> it pertains to the music industry itself and the fact that you know we've we've been doing this for so so long and you know it's it's a sacrifice to do this yeah yeah it's oh. not easy I mean shit you know you you sacrifice I couldn't do a it. lot I mean and, and it's in People understand it to a certain extent, unless you're actually doing this, and it's it's hard to understand what it really takes. Because once you really find out what it really takes to get out there and do it, it's like, man, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of you work. You guys drove. I don't even want to. I I was gonna ask like, About what time y'all leave in El Paso? I was gonna ask you this morning. morning. Oh God, God. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say bloody love was about your chick trying to kill you. I was gonna say I relate. Well, I can is. relate. To that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> and by my chick, I mean not only woman-wise, but life. Yeah, yeah. Life is. Man. How many yeah. people have we seen succumb to you know illness or mental unwellness? You know, um, and then you don't really hear about it until they have fucking fallen. You know, it's it's really really scary nowadays, it and is, some people just cannot is. deal with the pressure. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very hard to deal with a lot of the things we're we're going through in in life in general. You know, and uh, especially these past few years, coming out of the pandemic and I having know. to kind of, you know, re re experience life again in a normality, but it it still isn't normal anymore. You know, you and two, I think two, at least for me. You know, as I'm moving into kind of like this latter stage in my life now, too, and my friends are getting older, my favorite actors are getting older, my favorite musicians are getting older. My favorite football players I are know, getting right? older. All the hot and models I, I was football. in love with are older. Not American. <laughs> like, you know who I had a crush on? Is the chick, the lead singer from the Bangles. Remember that chick? Mm -hmm. I don't even remember her name. Hoffman, something like that. And I follow her, I followed her, I saw her pop up on Instagram and I followed her and I see her videos now and like she's like old school now. She's like, she doesn't look like back in the old, like, you know, yeah. I'm an Egyptian days anymore, but <laughs> she's, but you know, anyway. Uh, yeah, man. And I think we all have to just be able to, to adapt and to adjust and, you know, even in our own personal lifestyles because, you know, you can't be drinking and drugging every day and fucking smoking every day and because, you know, eventually it's going to. It's going to catch up to you. It takes a toll. It definitely hey, does. 
Brian, don't get, Brian's from Wattis. He's gonna live forever. Yeah. <laughs> he's one of those dudes who's gonna smoke, dude. I swear. That's why he sits here with us, dude. Smile. He's I like, swear whatever to happens, God, I'll still be here. Javi, I swear <laughs> to God, my grandmother was a smoker. Her right, Rick. My titita. That's why I used to call her. She lived to be eighty-three, and she smoked from like twenty to eighty-three. She smoked her whole fucking. That didn't kill her. She died of something else. Right, Rick? Rick knows. I don't know. Our gra- Rick's my cousin. I don't the know if I told you other. <laughs> God. Uh, okay, let's talk about videos quickly. Um, the first one was Bloody Love, and that was kind of more like a performance. I like that. It was cool because I always want to see jam- bands kind of jam. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, was that kind of like. The video the, we did for Bloody Love was uh, uh, Louie did an amazing job with us. We. We had a we had a particular uh, vision. vision that we wanted to do with that, and which is great. I mean, that video turned out amazing, um, and it just kind of like set it's the dark, tone. it's cool, yeah. Yes, and it just kind of set the tone yeah, for yeah. like opening our minds to what we were really trying to gra- like get put across in our video. So it was, you know, after we did Bloody Love, and and we we, we were like, you know what, let's just keep busting out these videos and. When we finally got, you know, we did in this dying sun, yeah, and, and you know, we were still learning, you know, Javier and and uh, his buddy Emmy, they uh, they pretty much were doing a lot of the the filming mm. and having another friend put it together, and mm-hmm. and then the third one, which is a scene, scene. That, that you know, it was like you that know one had more like of a script, and that's what we went for. We we yeah. decided we were gonna do more theatrics, more acting, more. Yeah, pertaining, you know, to video. We just didn't want to do a jamming, and uh, you know, it, it. We wanted something fresh and different. For Brian us. said, "I'm going to bring my cult book, <laughs> and y'all can use it for the video." Yeah, that's kind of funny that he mentioned the book because that's our friend's book that he actually published. I bet. Yeah, uh, I he's bet. A, he's a Freemason. Shout out to Justin. Over wow. There. It's uh um, <laughs> we kind of knew what the evolution of the videos was going to be. Uh, but on the third video scene, yeah, definitely, we 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 did develop a script for it. And it's funny because we were putting it together, my best friend and I, Emmy, shout out, uh, my co-directing partner and editor. Um, we, we went to Albuquerque to see a John Petrucci uh, show because Mike Porno was playing with him again, and we're big fans. Wow, we're yeah, I, yeah. So I heard about that. Yeah, so on the way back, we're, like, writing it down. Like, I, um, we were even stopping on, like, gas stations and getting the cameras. It's like, it's going to be like this. It's going to be like that. So we already – it's like when I tell people – when people tell me, like, I'm bored. It's like – why are you bored? There's so much shit out there you can learn, right? So that's what pretty much we all do Uh, because he's a fantastic tech guy when it comes to guitars, amps. You can ask him anything about that. You can ask him about effects, pedals. I mean, tattoos, whatever. Yeah, yeah. We all have our our thing that we just never stop stop learning. So when it came down to doing the third video, it was like, you know what? Let's do it ourselves. Right. Just, just, just right. see, save, save on some money. Cause, yeah, yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> I mean, bands are not making money right yeah, now. Yeah. Um, I mean, not at least the the starting ones. But um, it's it's quite the journey, and to be able to put it together and people kind of really have a good reception for it was like, okay, so we're we're kind of on the right path for that. Nice. Um, you guys are here in San Antonio tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, thank you so much. Really, thank you so much. Because when I heard the record, I was like, man, you know, Andre and I had been communicating. And I was like, dude, uh, yeah. And at first, I was going to tell Andre, let's wait to the new year. You know, so we can start the new year with a bang. But and then I was like, no, you're going to be here in El Paso's far, man. El Paso's far. And I can't tell you the last time I was in El Paso, but I was like, no, 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 no. I need to take advantage of them being in my area. Um, so uh, you guys have a show tomorrow at the Come and Take It. Uh, so any of you guys uh, out there uh, uh, who have, who will watch this interview uh, may have seen Scattered Storm, but um, that's great. I mean, I, I I thought that was really cool. I'm like, man, these guys are like really must believe in what they're doing because they're coming all the way to Austin to do a show. And we, t- we were talking off camera, and we don't need to get on into it now, but, you know, logistically, you know, we wish that there could have been, like, a string, you know, two or three shows right. if you're going to make that kind of investment to come out here. Yeah. But nonetheless, yeah. yeah, nonetheless, you know, at least you're getting one under your belt, and two, we're doing this interview tonight that will expose you to so many more people uh, out there in the scene. Um, 
And now well, I'll, be, I'll be honest. I mean, that this was the most exciting thing for me to come out here and do this with you. I'm going to be honest right now. I mean, <laughs> thank it's you. It's been a while since I've seen you, and your oh, show for is, sure. is amazing, man. And thank kudos you. Kudos to you, bro. You've been kicking ass. Thank you. You've thank you so ass, much. Man. And thank you for having us. Back in the day, I would watch, and you, there's a video on YouTube you interviewing Piss and Razors. Yeah. Oh, what year was it? At, were you playing at 101? I think. You were Club inter- 101. You, you wow. were interviewing Ed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was, yeah some, somewhere. I remember that video. He was, hey, did the label ever give you money for the new video? Oh, fuck no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 there yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's the one, man. So I was like, it's so funny. Like, he's saying he was young. He never thought he would be jamming with us. It's so funny because I'm here and I'm like, man, I saw all these interviews with, with Robs and I'm, now I'm here being interviewed by him. Yeah, so yeah. that's crazy how at some point you get there. You know, this life just works in really mysterious ways. And, you know, um, there's many there's been many musicians here in our scene who've kind of shared the same sentiment Uh, when they're young. You know, like even now I get young dudes, you know, aside from a band like Scum, like Scum, like they're young. Right. Right. But like there's a dozen other young 20 somethings who send me their stuff and I'm like, keep working, brother. You know, you're, you'll get there. You're not ready yet. You know, they're young. They're still developing their sound and who they are as musicians. And, and then, you know, they get into their early thirties and then they start really doing good, writing good shit. But at that point, you know, they've already gone through all the hard work and the legwork and they've, they've continued to be committed to music and now they're in a good place. And then I tell them, now you're ready for Rob's. Your music is good enough now to be talked about on Rob's. And so, um, yeah, well, that's man. That's more of an honor. Thanks for saying that. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> uh, really, I mean, you know, uh, that's, that's why I wanted to do this because I really like in this dying sun. I've been jamming it um, ever since I've gotten it. Uh, Javi fucking just sent me three tracks. And then I was like, isn't there five? Where's the other two? He's yeah. like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. or uh, no, that's you. You, yeah. was it you? No, it's just I thought I had sent the five tracks, but I guess two didn't. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 he, it's you. He sent me the email. I was like, well, there were supposed to be five. Yeah, yeah. Where uh, is the fucking other two, bro? Jesus Christ! <laughs> Here we go, technology. But thank you, I got them, and so I've been jamming them. Um, great stuff, great stuff, and I and I've really um, have absorbed it, and I was ready for tonight uh, to help you promote this record. And sure. as we end out, gentlemen, as we end out, uh, just a couple of other things. I talked about uh, with with our followers about the fact that I've had a long-standing relationship with the El Paso scene going back to 1998, 99. I did a couple of showcases, but I think I've done three showcases there in my career. Um, and I know a lot of El Paso musicians. Um and I've supported so many of them. And I've always kind of felt that El Paso, you know, because our state is so big, you know, there, there are differences between El Paso and Austin and the Valley and San Antonio and Corpus. Yeah. But when the, the El Paso scene has always had a special place in my heart. I always love going there. I always feel the love. People are trying to get me fucked up every time <laughs> I go there. Yeah, yeah. so... And you guys have great bands and, and bands who work hard. How how do you guys feel about the El Paso scene as we sit here today? Um, well, there's a lot of talented musicians for sure everywhere around the place. And it's just going to take that, you know, good mix of different instruments to, you know, put it together in the in the long run. But overall... It's always fun to go to the shows over there, even if it's local or there are a few nationals. You're always going to have a good time over there. Are the bands are the bands from El Paso, is there like a brotherhood? Is there like a community? Do you feel that? Or is there competition? Uh, uh, well, there's healthy competition. Yeah, yeah. Always. Healthy competition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I think that we're at a stage in our lives where... We can really appreciate other bands instead of getting that sure. that the attitude hate. of of hating, hating and yeah. bashing. Uh, I th- we're older men now. We've gone through that, you know, that unhealthy competition sure, stage. Sure, sure. So yeah, we we have a very he- healthy relationship with a lot of bands, 
and there's a lot of bands that are making it uh, in their own way. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's a trooper over there. So to be in that conglomerate of bands that are kind of branching out nationally and internationally, that's great. But yeah, there's definitely, there's going to be always, you know, the other side. But with with our case, I think that we built very healthy relationship with other bands. And, and it's been good. And there's some really good talent right that's now cool. going on. That's cool. And two... The uh, you 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 had kind of talked about this earlier, like oh Rob, you know we know each other, we've been in different bands together. Like there's this rich history now mm-hmm. that El Paso has. Yeah, it's there now. You know the the San Antonio metal scene ha- has a long history. El Paso is building that history, and even now it still goes deep. And every f- five years, decade that goes by is just getting deeper and deeper. I think. Uh- you know, and this is a fact, and nobody's going to take away that fact. I mean, Piss and Razors obviously did their thing back in the day. Mm-hmm. P- probably one of the first ones to do it. And open the doors. Uh, exactly. Well, not necessarily open the doors, but kind of expose the city. Right, right. Right? Right. So kind of right. put the city on the map. Right, right. right. I, p- I mean, plus they were great friends with Pantera, so, you yep. know, Texas, yep. Texas-style metal, you know, yep. which was great. I think that there's a new age of bands right now, which which is happening with us. You know, Kevin's band, because he has another band, Mono Shawin, you know, uh, other bands that we've gone through um, that have been putting out there a very healthy mix of, you know, music. And they're very, rec- they're being recognized and they're renowned now in the national level. And that kind of puts more of El Paso in the scene because, you know, it's mm-hmm. a drive through town, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, but the fact that we're able to do that now as you know previous you know great bands did i mean that just makes it even better because you know Paso's still on the map in the metal scene you know and that's why we want and in our case you know Juarez too because Juarez has yeah. a lot of talent too wow and we've seen it i mean i wish i could know more about that yeah i don't know anything about we'll that. talk about that later yeah, yeah. <laughs> jay do you do you uh produce some of these bands record some of these bands yeah uh i actually just finished producing and mixing his band's work i've done i'm doing another industrial band that i produce so i kind of do that on my downtime for sure yeah for sure so that that's a way of just me you being busy downtime? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Plus, I play in a million other bands. Really? So uh, uh, they're like cover bands and stuff. I I just love playing music. Right. Period. I mean, if I'm not playing the drums, I I, I really get depressed. I would. <laughs> I think. I think we would be remiss too. We were talking about this off camera as well. Um, to you know, we talked about the bands and, and the community, and it's difficult to have a community without the 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 venues. So talk a little bit about that. I think most renowned, we know, even even I do, um, about the Rock House in, in El Paso. And I kind of feel that. I remember when I first got there, I was like, yeah, it's a nice place, you know. But I know that Matt um, Martinez uh, has really worked diligently to kind of help improve the facility itself i mean yes i've seen it get like a lot nicer now yes right he's invested a lot of money i remember one time i was there i can't remember i think when i did my last showcase i did it there at the rock house and he was telling me rob i want to do this he was talking about all this and investment and stuff so that club um obviously yeah it's a nice little venue it's it's got i mean he's he's built it up to where i mean Bands want to play there. You know? Yeah, it, it, the sound is amazing. They have killer sound guys. The the light show. Um, tacos the, the, have tacos they there. Have, they have food there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they got the kitchen open. Yeah, um, yeah, that's cool. And uh, and you know it's in El Paso. There's really not much of a big original venue market there. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, that's like the only place. And he's also got another venue that should be open here pretty soon it's really like three times as big and it's gonna be wow. bigger stuff wow. so he's he's almost got that open so there'll be a a drastic change in, in what comes through el paso now i heard one time and it's just a rumor i heard matt lynch was gonna open a metal venue mm. was that just I, a rumor I, don't know that I heard that but he's got he's got a couple bars i know he has his own stuff. his own bars but yeah. those aren't like metal no, no. 
I don't know. Those are just like eateries, right? Kind of talked about it at some point. Little spirits yeah. type of places. Um, yeah. But they're nice places, and uh, yeah, you know, yeah. he's got a few of them, and he still manages uh, Bourbon and Brew, which is kind of yep. like the... The, the metal, metal hangout. Hang. Really? I guess you'd say, uh, Really? The yes, metal hangout. Too, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Course, yeah, I need to get back there, man. I need to go to all these places. But like I said, every time I go there, like I, I end up like Your dragging family. ass back to where I'm staying because I'm, I'm done. Because you get treated like family. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're like, oh, Rob, another shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. El Paso always fucks me up, bro. Yes. Yeah. Let me tell you a quick story. Quick story. The, the, when we did the Rob showcase at the Rock House, it was on a Saturday, of course. The Friday before, the night before, I was with Joe Razor, and he just took me out, and I got obliterated. So the next day for the showcase, when I had to do like, you know, 15 interviews and videotape, I was dragging ass. I was beat up, bro. I was like, man, get, I mean, get me through this day. Let me tell you a quick story. Um, I once picked up Ed from the airport because he was playing with Overkill at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, hey, can you come and pick me? It was a Monday, by the way. Like, yeah, yeah, Ed. It was all right. Well, let's go to... Let's go to Brass Asp, which that bar doesn't exist anymore. Um, I've been there. Yeah, there I was you there. Go. there you I go. was there before it closed. Yeah, let's 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 go and let's have a couple of drinks. Baby. Believe it or not, I think I saw the hate campaign there. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. That was way back. Way back. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you. This is probably at the other location, then. or was it always I the don't same remember. location? Really? Oh my god. Yeah. So uh, I I don't remember what happened. What time was that when y'all went to the Brass Asp? Uh, it was probably around 8. We got there. We got out at 12. I, I, and I still had to take him to his house. Oh, so God. Don't drink and drive. Yeah, he lives kind of like way on the I don't yeah, know, east side, the Devil's side? Triangle. Devil's Triangle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I still take him home. He's like, let's do a, another shot for the road. And mm -hmm. that shot, you should always say no. Because that's the one that will make you sleep in your car. And that's exactly what happened. I was like, I'm just gonna stay here for a little bit. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't even try to keep up with those dudes. <laughs> and they know it. They know it. I remember when the, the when they came over to interview. Um, Eddie knows uh, even uh, after that fucking moonshine night. Oof. But you know who was fucking trying to get me to do lots of shots? Fucking Geo. Oh, Geo oh, was. Oh God. Yeah, so Gio imagine was. me being in a oh, band with man. Geo and Joe. Oh no, you're done so. <laughs> you're yeah. done so, bro. Yeah. God. Yeah, but that's part of the rich history too of, yeah. of 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 the culture. You know, I always talk about the culture of cities and people, and that is the culture of of uh, you know, the El Paso scene, you know, and you know, a lot of love and you know, they only, you know, do me like that because, you know, they they want me to have a good time and stuff. Um but I don't try to keep up with those dudes. You know, <laughs> I don't. Um all right, gentlemen, so much we covered tonight. And as we end out, I would like every each one of you uh, just to say some parting words, uh, usually, you know, some love or thank yous um, as you guys embark uh, on this journey in supporting this really great record uh, in this dying sun. So let's start with Kevin first. Kevin, you go. Well, uh, you know, you get a shout out to parents, mom and dad, yeah. sister, you know, uh, all, all that stuff. Um, but, you know, a lot of love for you, Rob. Because, Thank you, you so know, much. I, 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 I really appreciate you uh, allowing us to come in here uh, and adding, you know, dur during the interview and beforehand, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm looking around at, at the walls. I'm like, man, this, this is a, there's a history. There's a lot of history, and then to you know to know that we're a part of that is now you is are really special. Um, uh, you know, so it's it's not lost on us, you know. And then also, uh, there's some people, you know, Justin Arman. Uh, he's given us a lot of uh, insight into how we should be uh, doing things. A lot, yeah, approach uh, our approach, sure. our general ap approach to things, and then also Blood Blast there. Um, you know, it's, it's nowadays labels are kind of not super helpful in their ways of putting stuff out there. So they, uh, they recently opened up on, on this is what's working, uh, in, in the scene, which is huge. You know, they don't do that uh, a lot of, uh, at all anymore. So yeah, yeah. The insight. So, you know, a lot of love to that Emmy, uh, two Mets and, you know, all of, uh, all the people that made, us being here right now possible so for sure yeah so. for sure yeah the same i you know my family 
they've been very supportive my brothers my dad my mom um my my boys all my boys they they've been there you know through all my <laughs> your clica my clica they're there they've been to a lot of my shows they've they've supported what me what about all your viejas Yes, I wish. <laughs> you got che- I, I, Andre, I know you, bro. I know you got I yes. wish, bro. I hung up. I don't. I didn't boots. ask you earlier off camera. Like, are you married or anything like that? But no. Yeah, I know. Nope. Well, then if you're not married, I know you got viejas. I'm single. Fuck yeah. Lonely. Yeah. Single. I'm not a pinche high roller. <laughs> hey. No, but seriously, I mean, thank you to uh, to everybody that that has really just been behind me and everything I do and understands what I go through really because it's. It's one thing to be your friend and support what you're doing because you're always oh, just my friend and like yeah he's in a band mm-hmm. so I'm gonna go to a show and but there you know I I do really have a, a close knit group of people that are really behind this and and I've really shown a lot of support through this this last release especially so it just kind of shows me that we're we're headed in the right direction and sure and it gives me a little bit more motivation because I sure. kind of felt that I was like not really up to the task of doing this but I mean to see that. You know the the music is actually shining some light in people's faces, and it's and it's a positive thing. So uh, it kind of gives me more uh, uh, motivation, inspiration to to keep doing this. And 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 honestly, thank thank you to everybody for that for the motivation to keep me going through. Because like you said, you know, it's the older I get, everybody's getting older, and it's like you know what, you're you're not the same mentally or physically, and you, mm-hmm. you have to really maintain a. a, a a good balance in order to not fall off you know? sure and i think that's this this band has really done that for me and 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 honestly thank you to these guys because amazing group of musicians right here i mean kevin javier and brian i mean this guy playing bass is like it's a breath of fresh air with everything we're doing right now and we finally feel this uh this motor is functioning on all cylinders so i think you've done a fabulous job fronting this band um you know, you, you, you always, you know, you're always good looking guy, you know, and I think too, you know, when I see your videos, especially on the scene video, you're not performing, you're just re- kind of really playing out the script. Mm-hmm. You did a great job, man. Your thank facial you. expressions, Appreciate your body yes, language, you. your look, um, totally cool, man. So thank I you, think bro. you're doing a fine job. Appreciate that. Fine job. Appreciate and and I, you know, when, when you're a, just a fan and you're just watching the video, uh, you know, you're going to be the focal point. You know, the front man is always the focal point. So if the focal ma- if the if the if the front man is pulling it off, then the band is going to pull it off. Exactly. And yeah. I and I hope that these guys believe in me that way. And yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to let them down. So, so that's why I say thank you to these guys, because it's it's an amazing uh, feeling to be a part of this project. And and also thank you to you for supporting me, because, you know, i you let me tattoo you like a hundred years ago. <laughs> Why? I don't think anybody knows that when I first started tattooing. But yeah. Now I've been tattooing for 25 years. So yeah, you know, wow. I'd like to think I got a little bit better. Yeah, so. cool. Cool. <laughs> I got to revisit. Yeah, well, uh, I think that we do deserve a, a good listen, you know, from everybody on the show and that can visit us and, you know, just follow us around to see what we can do for some uh, hard-hitting Cause it's hard hitting sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It gets kind of weird, but you know we'll get down to business for sure. <laughs> it's gonna awesome. Get weird. I mean. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, thank you for having us. Uh, it was great to be here finally in the historic rock metal works and be a part of this. It's not over yet, baby. Yeah. Oh no. It's not we over got yet. like two Where's bottles down there. <laughs> 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 um, definitely my bandmates because. Um, We've been as supportive of each other and the vision that we've had as a band, and that's very difficult to get a group of people that can work in, uh, with a single goal. And I've That been, cohesiveness yeah, is important. Yeah, and plus we all get along perfectly well. Cool, um, cool. And that's the camaraderie is really important to me in, in a band because, like I said, we get to a stage in our lives where we're, we don't just want to play with anyone else, and we want to get the r- right group of people. And I think these three guys f- for me have done that because I, ha- I hadn't done an original project in, for f- I don't know how long. Wow. So that and obviously all the people that have supported us, all of our families and friends, uh, particularly my, my father who's – wow. I mean he's just, he's just an incredible being. Uh, cool. He goes on tour with us. He really, hangs out. oh That's yeah, cool. He's always been with me. He's so. like Trujillo with Auto. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Wow. Uh, so that's cool, bro. Yeah, yeah. 
and uh, definitely all the bands we played with. Uh, we're truly sincere when we say that we've really enjoyed, you know, your company, and that uh, we wish everybody success because I mean the sh the sun shines on everyone at some point, and to see somebody do success is great. If it happens to us, great. If it doesn't, I mean, we, we gave it our best shot. There's so. enough of that to go around for everybody. Yeah, exactly. Enough, enough. And I don't think there's enough support between bands to do so. And I think that whether you're an established band or an up-and-coming band, like, support your, your, your local scene. Support each other. Because I know a lot of... Uh, established bands don't do that yeah. they're like no because i don't want to you know what sure. Ner nergal said For the sure. other day don't don't get in a band there's too much going on right sure. now it's like fuck you nergal seriously it's like <laughs> who are you to tell people to fucking not start a band if exactly. they want to start a fucking band let them start a fucking band right? yeah, yeah. but wow. anyway <laughs> and it's funny because a, a guitar tech friend of mine <laughs> works for him but <laughs> hi <laughs> hi bro bar uh, uh anyway but yeah thank you and please Right now, the markets are so hard, and the only way to really thrive is for you to go to shows, buy merch, and download yeah, yeah. and listen to songs. Yeah. So whether you can do each and every of those three things, great. You know, It helps us in, in a, a lot. Gentlemen, I just want to say thank you so much um, for sharing um, all of your deep thoughts about music and the band and the scene. Um, it means so much because you know you guys have your own unique perspective. So thank you for coming thank you, over to the Metalworks. Like I said, we're not done yet. We're not fucking done yet. It's Saturday night, and you guys don't play tomorrow until 6:30. So right. lots of time to kill. Uh, remember, everyone out there, the brand new record is called "In This Dying Sun." You saw the band Scattered Storm only right here on Rob's. Metalworks. <laughs>